Hello everyone, it is me, Naja Brown, and welcome back to my channel, Caffeinated Nooks. Today, we are doing something that I'm really excited about, my first ever review. Ah. Um, I'm really nervous because I've never done a review, I don't even know how to structure one. I'm just going to talk about the book, try not to give you spoilers, and... <laughs> try to just give you guys the best experience without giving spoilers okay because i just feel like i don't really like reviews that have spoilers unless i want to watch a review that has spoilers because i know that like if i'm looking for a book i don't want to know what's going to happen because i want to read the book i want to find out what's going to happen i want to go through the experiences so i'm going to allow that for you guys we're trying to do the most spoiler free review ever but also by giving you like some some spice Today, we're going to be talking about Tracy Dion's book, Legendborn. First of all, the cover. Second of all, the cover, okay? It's giving. Like, it's giving the best thing ever, and I'm, I'm very happy about this cover. And, I, okay. So. First things first, let's talk about the rating that I gave this and why I gave it this rating. My rating has gone down with the more books that I've read after this book. Um, it was a 5 star, then it was a 4.5, and now it's a 4 star, which is not bad whatsoever. It's not bad. It's just that I've read more intricate books, I've read more detailed books, I've read books that are more my speed, and so that doesn't take away from this book but i've noticed things about this book that i didn't like as i was discovering more about other books you know what i mean i don't know if that makes sense even in my reading journal i did like five stars for my reading journal but now it's kind of like going down i'm still in between like a four star or 4.5 but nonetheless i love this book let's talk about why i picked this book up so like i said in my last video and if you guys watched it if you guys haven't watched it you click in the cards up here or you could click down in the description box below and I will link it for you guys. It's also a book haul, so you know, find some books. Like I said in that book, I am an aspiring, well not aspiring, but like a, I want to write my own story. I've been writing since I was a kid. I've always loved writing. Anybody you can ask, I've loved reading. I love writing for as long as I can remember. I taught my sisters how to read their first books, okay? So reading and writing has been such a crucial part of my life and i want to write my own book and and that's just gonna happen and i'm gonna try to put time and focus into it and it's just something that i wanted to do however here's where i believe my problem laid right every time i picked up a book as a kid it was by a white author and there's nothing wrong with that because i have so many authors that i love and they're white like that's not a problem However, when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, me as a minority female, as a black female, you have to have some inspiration. You have to have some role models to look up to. You have to have some people whose writing speaks to you. I don't see that representation. There are not a lot of black characters and white people's stories. And even if there are black characters, I want to note that there are not a lot of black main characters. If anything, in a lot of stories, there are black side characters and they're like the weak friend or the funny friend or the person who gets killed off first we know how that goes it's discouraging as someone who wants to write and somebody who wants to write representation obviously i guess it's hard to write representation when you are a majority however i think you need to look at it in both ways and i think more authors should incorporate minorities and so you will notice that over the next few book hauls even the last ones i included some black authors i included some minority authors because i just feel like it's something that needs to be done because i feel like as a kid like i said i didn't grow up with that black representation or that minority representation in books especially not black representation and the books that i like to read are fantasy books i like fantasy i like dystopian i like young adult i like sci-fi books and i honestly you don't see much um, representation especially not when I was a kid now we're seeing more and more representation which is amazing but when I was a kid it wasn't there or if it was it was very little and I think that's something that needs to be addressed it's something that needs to be fixed and I think it's slowly like black authors are getting in here like they're putting their foot in there like they're like fuck that I'm about to kick down these doors but anyways back to what I was talking about because I was going on a rant because I'm really passionate about this topic but when I was looking, I wasn't looking for this book specifically, okay? I wanted to read a book with a 
black main character i believe when i finished reading this before i read this book i was reading a stephen king book which was dr sleep and i was like oh hey um that's great <laughs> but as always the main character is a white person a white boy a white man a white girl technically a white man but a little girl is she like she's like a kind of main character i don't know it was a white man and i was like okay i was like i love stephen king first of all <clears throat> love me some stephen king ask my friend I do not play about him but I wanted to see black representation like I wanted to see a black main character so I looked up on the good interwebs fantasy sci and sci-fi novels with black main characters this was like right on that list this book popped up and I wasn't even buying the book for the story for those of you who know me or if you don't know me you will get to know me but I buy books because of the cover <laughs> like I'll look up a synopsis or a summary and I've recently started doing that more and more because usually I would just go that cover is really pretty I'm gonna buy it and I very much so like I said I judge books by their cover heavily I, there are certain books that I will not get because I don't like humans on the cover like I don't like actual people like like people who like take a picture because uh, on the cover no I want that to be artsy I want it I want to feel something when I look at the cover so this was on the list. I think it was either the first or the second one. And I was like, oh my God, that book is gorgeous. Like that book is beautiful. And there's a black girl on the cover. And that sold me. Like I didn't even know if she was the main character. I didn't know she was a side character. I didn't know anything. I was just like a black girl on the cover, a beautiful cover. Let's fucking find out. After I purchased the book on Amazon is when I was like, okay, okay, maybe I should look up the synopsis. And I looked up the synopsis and it was, it was really good. So I'm going to read you the back of the book, but I'm going to also tell you about this book. When the shadows rise, so will the light. When blood is shed, blood will call. By the king's table for the order's might, by our eternal oaths, the line is law. This is the main synopsis and I'm going to give you guys her because she deserves it. After her mother dies in an accident, 16 year old, Bree Matthew wants nothing to do with her family memories or childhood home. A residential program for bright high schoolers at UNC Chapel Hill seems like the perfect escape until Bree witnesses a magical attack her very first night on campus. A flying demon feeding on human energies. A secret society of so-called legend-born students who hunt the creatures down. And a mysterious teenage mage who calls himself a Merlin and attempts and fails to wipe Bree's memory of everything she saw. The mage's failure reveals Bree's own unique magic and a buried memory with a hidden connection. The night her mother died, another Merlin was at the hospital. Now Bree knows there's more to her mother's death than what's on the police report. She'll do what it takes to find out the truth. Even if that means infiltrating the Legendborn as one of their initiates. He recruits Nick, a self-exiled Legendborn, with his own grudge against the group. And their reluctant partnership pulls them deeper into the society's secrets and closer to each other. <laughs> but when the Legendborn reveals themselves as the descendants of King Arthur's knights and explains that a magical war is coming, Bree has to decide how far she'll go for the truth and whether she should use her magic to take the society down or join the fights. That is basically the synopsis of the story. I don't think I can give you any, I, I don't think I can give it to you any better than the author herself. However, let's talk about, I talk about my feelings, okay? And how I felt about the novel because everybody's opinion on this novel is gonna be subjective. So I might as well tell you how I felt and why I felt like this. I think this novel was really great. Like it discussed so many important topics that I loved, it talked about, being black and trying to navigate in society. She goes to a PWI, which is a predominantly white institute, if you guys didn't know. And me, personally, who went to a PWI, a PWI for her undergrad and is still in a PWI for her masters, it's just so insightful because I see it firsthand. I see the racial undertones i see the microaggressions and some have been directed to me but i'm i'm not as nice as brie okay because i'd be like fix your talk and it's so important that you understand that this book uh, some people might not like 
the realistic undertone of it and the discussion around like real life issues but I feel like that is so important when you're writing a novel to sometimes include some real life issues you know there are things that I feel like cannot be avoided right to talk about um well fantasy is different right fantasy you could do whatever the fuck you want but even in fantasy i tend to like books that have that kind of realistic undertone like they talk about important issues they put them in there and we see brie firsthand navigating it it's so relatable like i don't know if that is just because i went through a lot of the same situations not like the magic and stuff because i you know i'm not magical or whatever i wish I wish so I talked about a lot of issues that people of color deal with especially black people and like the handling of our emotions and how we're not really taught to handle our emotions how, how us not being able to handle our emotions turns into a generational curse because it not only affects us but it affects our children and a lot of black adults a lot of black people a lot of black parents do not know how to handle their emotions and they push that onto their children and they project that onto their children oftentimes they need therapy and i'm speaking from the point of view of a black person i'm not a black mother but i have a black mother and i know black mothers and black people often don't seek out therapy i mean recently black people have been like i'm i'm really working on my mental health i'm gonna work on me the newer generation but the older generation is like i'm just gonna have to deal with my emotions like me myself and i i'm gonna have to deal with my emotions so we see that and how that has affected brie because her mother was very overprotective her mother was not playing with her it also talked about the fear of black people and failure like black people a lot of minorities actually they fear failure Black parents especially, they are very quick to condemn their child when there is failure. They do not want their child to fail. And so they are overprotective and overbearing because as a minority, failure is not greatly accepted. You know, not just by our parents, not just by our peers, but also by society itself. It's almost like we're set up to fail. Our parents don't want us to play into that. They don't want us to fail. And I saw that in Bree's mom. And it also talked about an issue that I think is so, so important, right? Is the fact that it addressed not knowing our ancestors, not knowing past our mom's mom or sometimes our mom's mom's mom. Like we don't know our, our ancestry. We do not know our lineage because that was taken from us everybody knows it was taken from us and so it really addressed that like we don't know you can see other people tracing their lineage for decades and in centuries and centuries because they have that but we don't and we saw the difference between it and we saw how it affected the black people and the minorities versus the white people right i really thought that was really important because like i don't know anyone past my great grandmother and I don't know if my mom knows anyone past my great grandmother. Like it, our lineage, our knowledge of our ancestors only extends to my great grandmother on my mother's side. And on my father's side, it only extends to my grandmother. So, and I didn't even know her, I just know of her. It's a really important topic and I loved how it was addressed and I loved how she found out about her lineage just little by little. And I love how it was just like refreshing like we were finding out all this with her and it, it really it felt it felt it felt like i was a part of this i felt like i was in this book but another thing that i really want to talk about is the representation in this book but, um not only was there only a black person but there was her best friend alice who i don't think was that important like she just she wasn't i didn't like her <laughs> alice cannot take accountability she could not she cannot take accountability for her actions. Their first night there, I don't know if this is a spoiler alert, but they go to a party and she blames Brie for the whole thing. Even though Brie didn't hold the gun to her head to say, you come with me to this party. Brie just like, let's go. And she was like, all right, I'm down. And she was like, this is your fault. I'm getting in trouble. I could have gotten expelled or whatever. I don't remember if she said I could have gotten expelled, but she was in trouble. And she was like, this is all your fault. And she didn't want to talk to Brie, which is weird because Y'all both went to the school together. You could have said no and stayed home, but you wanted to go out. So that's between you and God. Then there's also, I forgot her name, but there was um, a Cuban girl. 
that's pretty much it for the representation of racial but like let's talk about lgbtq plus representation because i don't think i think there was like literally two straight characters in this story because everybody was bumping bellies there was bisexuality there was lesbians there were gay men i loved it like i love the representation and as someone who grew up around a lot of lgbtq plus members my grandparents are gay like both of them are girls um my uncles my aunts my cousins so many just lgbtq plus representation and my family i would like to see it expanded upon because i was i think it was just like sprinkled on i would love to see it expanded upon but um we have a second book for that okay there's a lot going on there's a lot going on so i'm very happy that it had that representation so let us talk about the characters okay so we know brie we follow brie along the journey she is a very strong-headed strong-willed girl um sometimes you will question why she's doing what she's doing like <laughs> girl mind your business but we understand if we were in her shoes if she lost her mother she thought there was a different cause of her mother's death same thing if you did that and you thought there was a different cause you better go find them you better go figure it out like you better go make the people pay so understandably so you will question what she does see if you have never been in her position right i think it's i think she was really good representation of a black girl she was smart okay she got in there because she was smart she got in that program because she was smart she's one of my favorite characters i have two i don't know which one is first yet we'll see in a second book alice which who she, i don't think she's really a main character but she is brie's best friend so she is in the story like mm, don't like her i said that already she doesn't know how to take responsibility. I mean, in the end, she was down to ride with her friend. But if something happened, she's going to blame Brie again. Okay? Just like she did in the first part. She was blaming Brie. She's going to blame Brie again. I don't like Alice. I don't like Alice. Mmm. Don't like her. I just don't like her. Like, her personality is just like, hey, I'm going to just blame everybody else because I don't want to take responsibility. I don't like her. As you guys can probably see. And we have Nick. He is described as your basic boy next door. Blonde hair, blue eyes, that nice southern charm. Is it southern or northern? That nice southern charm. I'm going to say southern. And he just charms the boots off of everybody, I think. Everybody loves him. He's very charming. He's very sweet. Um, not my favorite character either. Um, he wasn't the worst character to be honest. He wasn't like my least favorite character, but he wasn't my favorite. Um, he was just like every boy that you meet in a book. I think he was very generic. Okay, I think he was generic. And then we have the man I love with all my heart, even though in the beginning you're like you're such an asshole, and that is Selwyn. I love that man with my chest. Okay, that man. Oh, I don't know about y'all, but I always love a very brooding bad boy i don't give a fuck character in a story uh <laughs> it just makes me really happy even in like anime because if you guys don't know i'm an avid anime watcher i've been watching anime since i was like six okay and like i love characters who are just like i don't care let's fight and cell is like that brooding like oh i'm gonna stare you down from across the room and i might fuck you up you know i love him he was an asshole to bring it well in the beginning i was already like i'm like hey <laughs> but like once the story came about and him and brie started really interacting he was a fucking asshole i didn't like him for a little while and then after a while i was like <laughs> maybe i do like you and then once towards the end you start finding out why he is the way he is kind of and um it all comes into pieces but i love him like that's that's my man in my head Period. Nobody could tell me anything. That's just what it is. While this story was really good and I really did enjoy it and I really did love it and I did really did love the representation and everything about it. It was rated 4.5 to 4 stars for a reason. Let's talk about that reason because I see a lot of reviews who don't talk about these things that like are not the best in the story. And obviously stories are going to have weaknesses. But I didn't like I didn't like certain parts. One of the things that I didn't like was like the chosen one trope. Ugh. I like it if it's done well. And while it did make sense in Bree's part because everything in the end started to add up, you're like, oh, okay, 
that makes sense i just didn't like it <laughs> Bria had like three different powers and by the end of the story she basically knew how to navigate all of them i mean the last one was a bit overwhelming because <laughs> you would be overwhelmed too but like it just was like she was learning how to navigate these powers so quickly and how many pages is in this book hold on let me see 498 pages okay she learned how to navigate those powers over one book 498 pages while she probably didn't learn it to the expert level or like master it to the expert level she certainly got it down i think it should have been a really slow burn with the powers and i feel like i loved brie and i feel like her having all these powers kind of dilutes her character in a way that i am i was like yes the second book but like no the second book because like what's gonna happen next you know what i mean and i pre-ordered it the minute she said it was coming out okay because this was a good book but it also has me thinking like what else are you gonna do with brie like i feel like if she gets another power i'm just done okay i finished i i give up i concede now was it explained well it didn't make sense it did but like i don't know it was just like i got this power it's showing up out of nowhere ah ah uh, it goes away i'm in danger comes back up i talked to somebody once i know what it is I learned how to use it. It was kind of like that. I didn't like that. I wish that we could have gotten a little more insight and a little bit more training into it. Because obviously we learned the origin. We learned that we got a whole mouthful of it. But I wish we would have gotten a little bit of training. Okay, this is how you use it. This is how you hone in on it. This is how, you know what I mean? And a great example of this, a lovely example of this is my current read right now which is Mistborn, okay? But Mistborn, I think, does a really good job of addressing and really honing in on the different elements of a power and really describing it and talking about it and discussing it and training in it so that we can see the progression over time. And I don't think we really got that with Brie. And that's kind of, that's kind of it. <laughs> that's kind of it. Legendborn, four to 4.5 stars really enjoyed it i pre-ordered the second book so obviously i'm gonna tell you guys about the second book i really love it and i really love the author like tracy dion i follow her on instagram i think i follow like three or four authors literally yeah this is my first review um i've never done a review before so let me know how you feel about it let me know what i can improve on <laughs> i will do my best to improve on it but yeah this is the end if you guys want to read this book, I would definitely recommend it. I think it was a good experience. Um, obviously, the things that I mentioned were things that I feel like could have been addressed and honed in more. But overall, it was a pretty good read. And it had some really important topics that I think people should always talk about. And I just love it. I love the context of it. I love the storyline. And it just it, it made me feel good. It was like my feel good book. But yeah guys, this is the end of my <laughs> video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, this is my first review. So if you guys have any recommendations on how to make my reviews better in the future, let me know. I'm always down. I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the best content. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked it. If you guys have any recommendations for any book that I should read, any books that I should check out, um, let me know down in the comment section down below. I have some really cool reviews coming for you guys that I think that you guys will be very much so interested in. And yeah, that's about it. <laughs> um, again, like I said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And click that little notification bell so you get notifications of when I upload. And you get to see more of me and more of my videos and more of my book recommendations and more of my reviews and all that fun stuff. But yes, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out. <laughs>